Hello and welcome. Today we are focusing our art therapy live on facing what lurks in the dark. So I'm going to get some candles lit so we can see what we're doing. Sometimes we need a little bit of light to face what's in the dark, to see what's going on. So today's art therapy is inspired by a couple different things. One is a Instagram post by Soul Spring Arts. And what they did is they had some images and they were exploring with paper and art materials tantrums about those big feelings we have, what happens when they take up space in our life and kind of destroy our peace. And instead of just shoving them aside and blocking them and saying, no, we don't want to have a tantrum. No, we don't want to feel these feelings. These big feelings are dark. They're scary. They're unacceptable. What they did with the art was start to face and explore those big feelings and looking for wisdom that they might be trying to reveal. And how do we handle those big feelings in a different way? How do we peel back those layers and face it before it becomes this explosion around us? So that really inspired me, and it reminded me of this book that I read a while ago called Learning to Walk in the Dark, and it is by Barbara Brown Taylor. I have a whole bunch of notes on it, and I'll put a link in my newsletter for that as well, as well as all of my notes, and a few extra thoughts and questions along with the description of today's activity. So some of the questions that we want to think about are, what do we fear? What are those monsters in our life? One of the things in this book was, why do we always reflexively look for that light switch? Why do we always try to banish the dark? What are we so afraid of with the dark? What are we afraid is hiding in the dark for us? Today, what I'm thinking I'll be using, and of course, you, these are always just suggestions, what I use. You don't have to use these art supplies. You could even just journal about it. I use the art to help face it, help explore it in a different way. There's something about using art. It taps into parts of our brain that we often censor out and kind of ignore. So the art really gives us an extra way to explore it and can reveal some things that we weren't paying attention to, which really connects very well to this theme of what's lurking in the dark and how do we slow down? How do we become a little bit strong, a little bit courageous just to peek? at what's there in the dark. I have a terrific story about one of my clients and this exact idea of how it really brought her some freedom and healing. But for supplies today, just some paper. You don't have to use white paper. I'm just using my journal again. I have a bunch of black paper that is scraps from another project I'm working on. Scissors. You can actually do this whole image, this whole project today on one sheet of black paper. That might be helpful. So black paper as the background or as an accessory here. You could use crayons, you could use uh, oil pastels, something that's gonna show up on the black. Might possibly be able to use ink tents or the Neo Color water soluble crayons. You could also use a white Stabilo pen, so they might have those in other colors as well that you could get. Colored pencils might, might show up on darker paper. You could also use, I just have a white jelly pen but you could use any color gel pen because those would show up. I'm trying to think of other things that would show up. Oh, I have some paint pens. Basically, when you're using dark paper, you just need to make sure that you have a, a medium that's gonna show up. I might have scissors, glue, could use paint for this. So today, learning to face what lurks in the dark, discovering what treasures, what monsters might be in the dark, and not just ignoring them and shoving them back in the closet is the theme today. So, so what I was thinking, as I'm thinking of what is hiding in the dark, how could I represent the darkness around me and things that are hiding? And two, two ideas popped into mind. One is a story of a client multiple years ago that I was working with, and she was having hallucinations. She was terrified to go to bed, and she would crunch up in the middle of her bed and tuck her sheets and blankets in real tight around her because she said there was a snake that appeared every night, like a rattlesnake, and she could hear it. She could sense it moving around her at night, and she was just terrified every night. And so I encouraged her as she was tucked into bed I'm just gonna tear the paper here. 
and this is what I want to represent here with my black paper is sheets. She's tucked in her sheets. What if she gets really super, super brave one night and peeks out of her sheets just, just a little bit, just a little bit. So that's what I'm representing with that little crack in the sheets here. What would happen if she did that? What might she see lurking there in her bed? What might this snake look like? And so she did that. She worked up the courage. And she peeked. And she came back to me after she had gained the courage to peek. She said, you wouldn't believe it. This snake has the head of a fuzzy bunny rabbit. And ironically, or maybe not so ironically, her favorite animal in the whole world is a bunny. So this terrifying snake, which she'd been fearing for months, had the head of a bunny rabbit. And so she was a lot less afraid to go to bed. And so then I asked her to get even more brave and to open the sheets just a little bit more and interview to ask the snake with a rabbit head a little bit more and she did she finally she got really brave one week and she peeked out of her sheets and she saw this little bunny rabbit head and heard the rattle of the snake tail and said what who are you what do you want what are you here for and the rabbit answered her back in a really calm soothing voice and said I'm here to protect you at night and the rattle is all of these like bracelets and really pretty things. It's not actually a rattlesnake tail. It's, it's got all of these like bangles and cool looking bracelets and jewelry. And they make this rattly sound to keep the scary dreams and the scary people away from her at night. And after that, she was not afraid to go to bed at night. She had great dreams after that. And eventually that hallucination actually disappeared for her. Um, and all sorts of other healing took place. But it all started, the keystone for the healing journey that we took with her was when she became brave enough to peek at what was terrifying her in the dark. So one way I was thinking of representing that idea today for us is peeking through the blankets here. And another thing I was thinking that might be helpful as we explore what might be lurking in the dark is to create little an interactive page where we create like windows or doors I think there's a few ways to do it. Always a few different ways to try to express something visually. You could just cut a square or a rectangle and fold it, fold one side of it over a bit to create a flap, and then just glue this flap down so that you could peek at what's behind this dark door. And I'm just gonna start gluing some of these down. I'll trim the pages up later so that you can see what I mean. I'm gonna have to glue in a couple couple layers, I think. What lurks in the dark? What are some of your fears? What things prevent you from having a peaceful night's sleep or from trying something new? What are those things that lurk around you that paralyze you or hold you back? I think this is probably the easiest way to do the window. You could, another way you could do the window is, it'd be better if I had an X-Acto knife, but you could cut into, if you had a large sheet of paper, you could cut into it. So handy dandy, I have a groove in my table here. You could use, the, you could also do this if you put like cardboard underneath your paper and you just cut a slice, turn it. Cut a slice. Turn it again. So you want to cut three lines to create your door. Do not cut on nice wood. Do not cut on your linoleum table or the floor. Make sure you have something protecting your surface. But cut three sides so that you have space here for the hinge. And then you can fold it back. And you could, of course, you could do this different directions. So if you wanted to have more of like the double door, the French door idea, or the window shutters, 
cut your middle line and then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna cut. I'm making sure to line this up with the groove here on my working surface. You're gonna cut this original, you know, one side this way and then you're gonna cut those two lines on the other side as well. If you want a bigger opening, if you have an exacto knife, it is much easier to get things exact. So then you would have a wider opening. And if you wanted to have a bar in the middle so it looked more like a window frame, just leave a space there in the middle. Never cut towards yourself when you're using scissors or an exacto knife and make sure you know where your fingers are so that if the scissors or the exacto knife slipped, you're not gonna slip onto yourself. And I speak from experience that does not feel good. And it really hinders the uh, art process because you gotta stop and tend to yourself. So a little safety when you're working with sharp objects. So there would be another way to do that. And if you had a, another sheet of paper, you could do that same kind of opening and you have that like window grid across. But just another idea of how, do you, how could you create pockets to put in your journal or your paper today, thinking about darkness, thinking about what's hiding what's lurking. These could be windows, these could be closets, these could be doorways, whatever you want them to represent today of what could be hiding back here, lurking in the dark. Some other questions as you are creating what's lurking in the dark besides what is, what's scaring you, what's holding you back, what's frightening you, what keeps you awake at night. Literally, are you afraid of the dark? Might there be something in that to explore for you? A lot of loose pieces of paper right now, I'm trying to get those lined up. Be a little patient with you, yourself. And there's even something as you kind of battle the art supplies sometimes, there's some insights that you could gain from that, which I'll ask questions in the newsletter. We'll provide some questions to help process even the art making bit. So as you're doing this, I obviously left um, some white paper in the background, so you could use any kind of materials to add to that. But asking those monsters, those things in the dark that are lurking there for you, what is it? What's the shape? Um, what might its name be? Some of those good introductory questions. What color are their eyes? And then you could ask them, well, what do they see with those eyes? What are they feeling? Things like that. Do they have something that they want to make you aware of? Are they needing something? Are they in need of some care? Are they frightened of something? Why are they in the dark to start with? Some of those questions. Now, if you choose to just have a black background, you can use anything uh, like crepas, crayons, anything wax-based. There are pencils, uh, like Stabilo pencils, which are made to go on dark colors, which are terrific and you could create an image. So today I'm just I'm gonna stick with drawing the eyes. So you can work kind of the reverse and let the colors, you could draw any kind of an image, but let the colors transform the blackness. Usually we draw on white paper. And so this just sort of reverses that. Letting an image, letting colors emerge from the darkness could be another way to interpret and, ex and explore this whole idea of what's lurking in the dark. And what are they seeing? What do they see with these eyes? What, what message do they have for us? There's some really great insights from this book, uh, Learning to Walk in the Dark, which I will link to um, under this video. And I'll have some of my personal takeaways from that in my newsletter. But some of the things I just want to share quickly with you that Barbara Brown Taylor highlighted in this book was when we're in the dark and our eyes can't see very well, our other senses are heightened. We have to slow down. We can't just sprint through a dark place. We have to slow down and feel things out and allow our other senses to absorb some things. It helps us to see things in our lives or in the world that we can 
observe and feel differently because we are slowing down. Things that we miss when it's bright out and we're just running around through our busy life. Eyes don't have to just be one color. Even monster's eyes, even, even scary things in the dark are different colors. And this helps us get to know them a little better. See, oh, you know, in the dark, our uh, pupils really dilate too, don't they? Allowing us to catch things, little glimmers of light that we might miss in the daylight. The stars are always out, but we miss, we miss the stars. We miss seeing all the different colors of stars when the sun is out and it's so bright and we're busy with our lives. So maybe you wanna add some stars in your image. Stars are different sizes. They're different colors, they're different distances from us. On an artistic note, that's what I have to be painting this week because it's the end of the month and my uh, due date is coming up and our challenge in the art group that I'm in is to paint a skyscape. So I have stars, universes, clouds on my mind today as we're exploring the dark. What is lurking in the dark? Is it all as scary as we fear? So thanks for joining today. I hope you'll do something with darkness and exploring it this week for some personal art and gain some courage to explore what's in the dark, courage to move forward towards your dreams. If you'd like more question ideas, uh, some more notes from the inspirations today, I'll have all of that in the newsletter, which you can get at hopeandhealingathome.com. You can sign up right on there and say, yes, I want to receive the newsletters. And I send those out each week to correspond with these art therapy lives and take the insights a little bit deeper. Well, thanks for joining. Have a good day. Remember, not everything that's scary is bad.